hope you enjoyed this yin video. It's going to have portions of yang, little yin, little yang in it. Um, it's a shortened version, maybe about half an hour long, and uh, just a quick with abs and some stretching. And hope to make this a two part so that I can fit as many of those poses that I believe are daily poses for you, but yet some little challenges and variations in there. So as you get your mat, you may want to get a block and strap and settle on your mat. Quiet your mind. Deep breaths through the nostrils. Lengthening your spine, sitting firmly on sitting bones evenly. And then inhale, lift up your arms to the sky. And exhale, come down through the center. Namaste. Let's do it again. Inhale, lift up through the sky. Exhale, come down through the center. Lace your fingers and press up to the sky, pressing the palms upward, lengthening the whole rib cage, using your serratus muscles around the sides under your armpits to lift and contract and your obliques. And set your left hand down and reach your right hand over your ear. And then reverse it and lengthen. So I'm doing the opposing arm, so I'm teaching in a mirror version. Exhale, both hands down. Roll your shoulders so that you can face me in the video and not have to figure out which is right and which is left. I'll try to call out right and left for you. Inhale, lift to the sky. Make a cactus arm. Reach your right over your left for an eagle and lengthen. If this is too tight for you in the beginning of this, you can just do this modification or even lace hands, even if elbows won't come together. And then inhale back up to the sky. Exhale out your cactus again. And then we're going to do left over right eagle arms. I'm finding that everyone's very tight from sitting and from not doing all of their normal exercise routines. And so this is just a little bit of therapy for you. Inhale up to the sky again. Exhale, arms down. Let's turn sideways and reach your feet out in front of you in staff pose. So you want to draw your navel in. Lift up through the sky with the crown of your head. Inhale up to sky. Let's exhale, sweep forward and back and up. Sweep forward and back and up. Sweep forward and back and up. Exhale and bring the hands behind. Bring your feet as wide as your mat. Settle on your sitting bones. You can have your knees bent if you want. You can have uh, blocks or spacers underneath the knees if that feels better to you. You can have, you can be sitting, if you're on a firm surface, you may want to put something underneath, pad underneath your sitting bones. Take a deep breath, looking up. And then exhale, folding, trying to lengthen the neck, lengthen the spine, reaching the crown of the head toward the center between those toes, imagining that you're going to move to that space. And then inhale, lift up to the sky, reach up. Exhale, hands behind you. Lift your chest, look up. Little baby fish, Matsyasana here. And then head center and turn your toes around in big circles using your ankles. Circle them the other way, lengthening. And then bring your feet together, bend your left knee and circle your right arm around it, looking around to your back arm, flexing that right foot, and then open it up into Janyu, bringing the foot into the groin or inner thigh, and take that twist just a little bit deeper. Breathing here, long deep breaths, looking over that back shoulder. And then come back to center, bring your feet out, inhale, lift, exhale, forward fold, not too long in that forward fold, and I want you to reach, I want it to feel more like a, a gentle stretch, so if you need to bend your knees, or you could take your strap and bring your strap around the edges of your feet and lengthen, so it's about lengthening the spine, not necessarily to reach and touch the feet, it's lengthening the spine in the process, and let's bring that right knee, your, your right knee to a bend, and come around and twist around to the back, looking around your back right shoulder, lengthening your spine as you do it. So you keep 
lifting up with your front of your sternum and lengthening the tube of your waist. All right, let's bring the foot down into the groin area, inner thigh area for Janyu, and feel that twist. Maybe taking it a little bit farther, maybe inhaling, and then exhaling as you twist that little bit farther, but always being mindful that you're not pinching anything. You're flexing the foundational leg on the left, flex foot, come back to center, bring your leg, shake them out, bend them out, do a little cobbler, butterfly. So bringing your soles of your feet together, open them like a book, butterfly your knees. You can bring your hands under if you need that support. You can bring them under your thighs if you do. You can put spacers, little pillows, blocks underneath. And for many that are tighter in the hips or have any problems with your hips, this might be a super, super tight outer movement in the outer thighs, inner groin. And then I'm gonna reach my feet a little bit farther forward in this cobbler slash star pose as I'm coming into a little deeper forward fold hip opener. Lengthen your spine, deep breaths as you come over those legs. And then inhale, feet come together in your staff legs and exhale down. Now bend your knees and roll to your back and hug your knees and rock from side to side. And then from here, come to a happy baby, bending your knees and rocking from side to side. So this is all still in the warm up portion of your practice. And then maybe opening your legs in a big V up there without locking the knees and just open through the groin. You can bring your hands behind your calves, behind your ankles. You could support the whole time, maybe bring them on the inside if that feels better for your knee or maybe in the inner tendon area of your knees. And then bring your knees together and engage your abs, pull them down into the center and bring your nose to your knees. Press your right leg out, keep hugging your left knee, holding, warming up that core. Maybe taking a twist by bringing your right arm over it, keeping lifted with your upper back and looking toward your hand, a little twist, and you're back in, rest the head down, turn it from side to side. If you have any tension there, you can always bring a hand behind the head to support or leave your head on the mat. All right. Now let's bring that left leg out, tuck up into that right knee, and bring your left hand around, maybe reaching out that arm, squeezing and holding. So you keep the contact with the belly tucking in here as the leg extends. You're trying to keep your shoulder blades off of the mat and come back in. Laying back down, rock it from side to side, making it feel really good. Bring your feet hip distance and open your arms like a big T. And then see if you can keep both shoulder blades down as you windshield wipe your knees, opening up those hips and warming up that low back and psoas area a little bit more. It's always good to warm all the joints, all the areas that you're going to work. And then inhale, cross the ankles, exhale, swing back up. Now we're gonna spin it around and see if you can come through into a tabletop. In your tabletop, you want your hands as you crease the wrist at the shoulder, your belly tucking in, spine long, head not dangling down. Try to make your back nice and firm across the upper back. Sitting bones facing straight back there. And then draw the navel in. Now your sitting bones are coming toward the mat. You're going to the cat, your head is drawing down, back is rounding, reverse cow, eyes look forward. Rounding into your cat again and reverse cow. And you can do as many of these sets of cat and cow with the breath as you need for your warm-ups. It's really awesome for the spine. And then come to your neutral. Press your right, left leg, sorry, left leg back behind you and tuck the toe. And then tuck the toe of the left leg. I want you just to float up with that left, that right knee, and then bring it back down and bring both knees together. Okay, now your right leg, bring it back, tuck your left leg, come up, uh -huh. and then float it back down, and come back to a child's pose, bringing your arms out in front, balasana, hips coming back over the edge of your heels, trying to flatten your toes, each of your toe joints and the tops of your feet. And then work into a sphinx arm, which will be your forearm position. 
and tuck your toes into a plank here. So this is a little bit challenging if you haven't been doing core work or if you have weakness in your low back. So you wanna engage your thighs, your butt, and you could always bring your knees down and you're still gonna get a lot of benefits from this. So in a forearm plank, chest is broad and open, gazing between thumbs, belly in, sitting bones pressing towards your heels. At any point you need to drop your knees, drop your knees, just working on that core strength and warmth. Let's bring the knees down and sphinx pose. You're looking forward and you're trying here not to bring your shoulders into your ears. And lengthening, bring your sternum up and forward. And then exhale down, bring your hands by the sides of the chest, tuck your toes under, push up to a plank and back to your down dog and tread your down dog. Really pressing through your toes, your heels, your ankles, let your chest come down, head come down, downward facing dog. Let's go to your right leg up in the sky, bring your knee to your nose, your right leg up to the sky, bring your knee to your nose, your right leg up to the sky, bring your knee to your nose, and then look forward and see if you can step that foot forward. Now that might be not a doable thing at the first when you're first learning how to do this position. So where you might be is, you might be up here and you land here. And you just go, okay, 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 I'm gonna work it up. Eventually, the joint of the hip and the thigh and the abs because you want to tuck way in, lift up, and step that foot forward. Eventually, that starts to happen for you. In that position, lift up your right arm. Your left arm is down, and you're in a lunge twist. Maybe you can drop down a little lower in that back left leg. And then exhale, hand down. Step back to a down dog, tread it out. Back is long, spine is long. Trying to work your chest down toward the mat, lift up your left leg, and bring your knee to your nose, and to the sky, and your knee to your nose, tuck it in, and your foot to the sky, maybe one more, knee to nose, foot to sky, okay, now we're gonna work it forward, here it goes, step that foot forward. Now you can always wiggle, wiggle, wiggle that foot, and then the other leg is foundational, and the bottom hand is not, so if you're feeling like you're leaning over here into this hand, I want you to work on maybe bringing the knee down and coming so that the fingers are light, so that when you're in this position, you're working that back thigh, the abs, and you could just graze with the hand. Can we lift up with that left arm? And you're trying to make it a vertical line from your bottom hand all the way up, and maybe dropping that back thigh a little bit, getting into that hip flexor. Long, deep breaths, looking up. Exhale, hands down, step back, find down dog, tread it out. And we're gonna work into a dolphin pose. So draw the navel in, sitting bones to the sky. You're gonna come down with your forearms. And your forearms and your wrists are the same width apart. So you're making long parallel lines in your mat. Your head is up. You're looking between those arms. Now, if you need to just drop your head for a moment, if you have tightness in the neck, if you have a lot of tension in your upper back, you can drop your head for a moment, but don't press it into the mat. So you want space between your head and the mat, dolphin pose. Now, press back up into a down dog. If that wasn't doable for you, you can tread your down dog, then here's where you can go. You're in a dolphin pose. You bring your knees down. You bring your hands back to your down dog hand and arm position and then you come up and use your strength of your thighs which are much stronger than our arm muscles and larger so you start working toward that strength treading treading bending knees taking hips tippy toe walk your feet up towards your hands draw your navel in spine is long bring your chest closer in towards your legs if you can and then reverse one dive up to the sky and take a namaste hand. All right, we're gonna step toward your, your right shoulder, move it in to your proserita, inhale up to sky, exhale hands to hips, so your toes are parallel to each other, feet parallel to each other, inhale to sky once more, exhale hands behind the back, lace fingers, fingers down, knuckles down, 
head looks up and then forward folding from your hip hinges opening your chest opening your shoulders deep breath knuckles are coming up maybe pulling up farther maybe knuckles coming more around like they're going to go past where your head is dropped there maybe not maybe your hands are here on your back maybe they're you know close to it maybe they're not lifted up listen to your rotator cuff your whole shoulder joint don't force anything exhale hands to the mat if they're super tight you could put your strap between your hands on your back cupcake your fingers and look forward and then exhale down now walk out down dog hands spine long spine long deep breaths here and take your right hand and bring it over to your left foot and look underneath look under see if you can look under that arm see if you can take another breath and twist just that little bit farther don't let your feet turn in keep your feet where they are don't lock your knees and then come back to center, chest moves down, lengthen spine, get really light on the left, bring it over into your twist, look underneath your arm, breathe, lengthen, lengthen spine, take another breath and go maybe a little deeper in that twist, deep long breaths, and then reach your hands back to your down dog, press your chest down, lengthen, big long spine, and walk your hands back and this time we're going to go side to side bending knees and then let's bend knees and lift foot so as you do this you're pressing into your heel joint you're not locking your knee out your knee has a little bit of softness because you're working with your hamstrings your quads your groin muscles and then moving into your skandhasana stretching out so you're bent on your right your left is flexed you can keep your hands down you can walk your hands in front. You could bring your hands up for balance. Maybe that's not happening. Maybe one hand stays down, one hand's up. Maybe both hands are up. Maybe both hands are down. Never force it. Okay, bringing it back up, going side to side again. So let's go to the other side, skandhasana. Skandhasana. You could be here for your skandhasana, here for your skandhasana. Maybe a little bit lower for your skandhasana. You could be here sitting on a block underneath. Or your skandhasana maybe fingers stay down the whole time maybe you bring your hands up so the balance part of this I find it really really tricky but you could always slap them out a little bit and bring them back up so you have that option of keeping hands down or bringing hands up for your skandhasana don't overstretch the extended leg and then come up and side to side and then reverse swan dive, lift up to sky, reach all the way up. Namaste hands. Turn face the front of your mat with your right foot forward, your left foot back. Lengthen. Inhale up to sky, breathe. Exhale, cactus. Inhale up. Exhale, cactus. Let's do three. Inhale up. Exhale, cactus. Bring your hands in front of you, press your palms together, lengthen your spine, lengthen that back leg. Take a breath, inhale, exhale, bring the hands down, kick that foot up, bend your knee and circle it. Bring it behind you in extension of seagull. Keep one hand down, and so your left leg's behind you, lift your left arm. And bring your hands down, feet together, eyes look forward. Exhale, powerful pose. Lift your arms, draw your belly in, sit your buttocks back, reach your arms by your ears, press back with your hips. Namaste hands. Big breath, inhale to sky, reach up. Exhale, forward fold, diving. Inhale, eyes look up. Exhale, head down. Step back to a plank, or you can jump to your chaturangas. So you can jump back, chaturanga. Upward facing. If you are doing your vinyasa, you're going to bend your knees and press into your chaturanga and your up dog, your down dog. So if you are jumping, you're staying like a stick straight. Let's press our down dog 
into a firm foundational down dog lengthening spine again. Deep breaths. Long deep breaths. Looking forward. Step or jump those feet to your hands. So you can bend your knees and get a little hop. Or maybe you're just step stepping or walk walking. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse, long dive to sky. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, eyes look. Exhale, step that right foot back. Hold a lunge. Inhale, lift up. Reach to your lunge. Just like we did on the other side. This time, instead of cactus arms, we're going to do a different arm. Okay? So I want you to do scarecrow arms, which is soft bend. And I'm going to pull them slightly back. And I want you to come down a little bit. Bend that back knee a little bit. And then I want you to drop the arms behind. Lace the fingers and drop them back. We need a lot of that chest opening. A lot. Maybe looking up and holding that balance. Inhale back up. Reach up. Good. Exhale. Bring it down. Let's see if we can bring our um, left arm up to the sky. And left foot's in front. So then your right hand's down. Looking up. Twisting. Breathing. Drop your back leg a little bit if you can. Bring both hands down. Press into your pyramid stance. Bring your chest down towards your leg. Take a deep breath. Look forward. Lift that back leg. Take it into extension of seagull. And from here, lift up the arm. Lift up that twist arm. Look up to the top arm. Exhale, bring it down, bring both feet together, eyes look, exhale, reverse swan dive, lift to sky, and come to namaste. All right, sit back, arms in front of you into your powerful pose. Okay, lift up, left knee up, left toe out, ikapata D, hands to hips, bend your knee, hold it tight, bring it up. Now you can stay with this. You can put a strap over that foot and bring it to Ikapata C, which is the one that we bind it and we bring it up as high as we can. And bring it in and bring it down and inhale to sky. Exhale, fold. Inhale, eyes look. Exhale. Let's do a little vinyasa in between here. Chaturanga, upward facing dog downward facing dog and then stepping walking or jumping feet to your hands eyes look exhale reverse one dive lift take namaste pause all right let's bring up that right leg and extend the toe uh -huh. D and bring the knee in and hug it up bring it way up and maybe reaching it with your hand and bringing it up and wherever it goes. So one side might be different and probably is than the other. You're trying to reach it up as if you were going to kiss your knee into Ikapata C. And then bring it in and then bring it down and up to sky. Exhale, fold. Inhale, eyes look. Exhale, tiptoe. Come down. Tiptoe, lengthen spine. Lift up chest. Reach over to your right side. Opening up. Thumb up. Bring it in. Reach over to your left side. Thumb up. Arms open. Bring it in. Sit down on your bottom. Extend your staff. Inhale up. Exhale, forward fold, deeper, Paschimottanasana right now. Deeper, seated forward fold. Lengthen spine, look at toes, big breaths. Reach for your right foot with your peace fingers, lift your toe. You can always do this with your strap. And open it into half Upavishta Konasana, which is the open angle pose seated 
upward lifting that foot, lengthen spine, trying to open that groin without locking that knee. Bring it in, switch into Heron, looking behind you. And in Heron, we're not trying to bring that foot necessarily way up above our head, but we're opening across our collarbones and really concentrating more of the stretch on your right serratus right waist. All right, bring it in. And here, you could put your strap around it if you would like, because we're gonna do a reclining pose. So you can come down and bringing that big toe over the crown of the head. Open up your left arm like a T out from your body and pulling that foot a little closer. You could be just holding the foot. It'd be perfectly fine. If you don't have a strap, put a towel on it. it it's, it's really a nice stretch though to keep your shoulder in the socket engaged and relaxed as you're stretching concentrating on the back of that hamstring. And then bring it out to the side, open it up, trying to keep that hip straight here on that left side and not popping up. And bring it back up and extend it. Inhale, arms to sky, engage your belly, curl up partially. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be a roll up. And then squeeze a little bit more. A little bit more, a little bit more. Until you come up to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Reach down into your posture. Lengthen your spine. Big, deep breaths. Reach for your peace fingers onto your left foot. Now remember, here you put your strap on. Open up in your half or your Ardha Upavishta Konasana. Lengthening it and opening it up to the side. Trying to lift your chest. Look around to that arm. Breathing deep, big deep breaths. And we're gonna switch. So you're gonna take your left, or your right hand, sorry, onto your left foot. And look around to the back, your left arms behind you. You're lengthening, you're breathing. And then come back around to the center and here, it's nice if you want to use your strap around your foot or you could just hold, absolutely. So you're gonna engage, lift, exhale, you're gonna fold, curling back, not plopping back, and pulling that foot closer to the head. Really, lengthen. I like to relax my shoulder while I'm using the strap as an assistance to help keep increasing that stretch on the back of that hamstring and calf without locking anything and without forcing anything. So sometimes we tend to do this thing where we just muscle our way up and you really wanna let that muscle release in the stretch as much as possible. Okay, let's take it out to the side and when you do, you're keeping that right hip bone down and, and sitting bone down and straight. So once it starts to curl over like that, you've lost the stretch. So my foot's not gonna go very far. A lot of people I see, they go, oh, I'm going all the way down, but they've lost this part of the hip stretch. So you wanna keep that hip firmly foundational. Okay, bring it up. Let's bring both feet into it this time, into the strap if you have one or a towel. If you don't, that's okay too. Bring it overhead a little bit. And then let's bring that foot way, 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 way up toward your head, if you can, wherever you can take that stretch, wherever you can take that stretch. Deeper breath. And then bring both hands on the strap, bring your feet up, do a happy baby with it. The strap is a great assistance, or you can be using a towel if you don't have a yoga strap. Or you could use a bathrobe belt or whatever you have that can just apply a little bit of taut um, foundation and pressure as you're working with it and assistance. All right, now bring your feet back in and we're gonna engage. And if you wanna do the assisted low boat where you have your hands on your strap or the unassisted low boat, either one, Sometimes I get even more abdominal 
work with the assisted because I'm really focusing here and I'm not using my quads or my legs as much. Okay, release it down and arms go overhead. Long, deep stretch. Bend your knees. And we're going to reach our hands down beside our hips. Tuck your belly in and come up into a bridge. So feet are hip distance. Knees parallel so you don't want them caving in or out. Let your heels down. All four corners of your feet. I like to wriggle my shoulders under and open my collarbones further. Lifting up with your pubic bone and tucking the belly in. Maybe lacing your fingers underneath you if your shoulders feel open enough. So bridge is one of those foundational poses that I find just so uh, phenomenal uh, for your spine, for your posture, strength of your core, your quads, health of your low back. So you wanna keep, don't clench your butt, you wanna keep pushing those sitting bones toward the, the back crease of the knee area. If you think about aiming them in there and lifting the pubic bone so that you don't pinch or clench your butt. And then release, curl your belly and come down, hug the knees, bring your nose to knees, deep breath there, long deep breath, inhale up, pike again, exhale, swing forward into your staff and lift up. Just a simple spinal twist to your right, lengthening. See if you feel longer and more open through your shoulders, through your spine. Back up to sky. Let's twist the other way. Looking around to your back, left shoulder. Then come back into center and inhale up. Exhale, forward fold. So forward fold, neutral pose. But it's always good when you're practicing your asymmetrical poses. If you can remember to always do the left and the right, and it doesn't have to be in the same way as long as you do get that left and right side of a pose if they are asymmetrical. Inhale back to sky, reach up. We're gonna do a reverse tabletop. So we're gonna bring the hands behind you, bend the knees. A lot of people tell me here, oh, it's all about the wrist. What I want you to concentrate on is engaging the belly, the pelvic floor, the buttocks, sides of your waist, the strength of the upper chest and, and abdominals, even up into the higher abdominal wall. I want you to think of how you squeeze all that in, like a corset is pulling in. The shoulders broaden, but the humerus bone stays in that joint. And the fingers spread wide like starfish to kind of displace some of the weight so that you're not just focusing right on the edge of your carpal bones. Now, can we lift? into our reverse tabletop and look up and lengthen. Now, if you feel anything like too much on your shoulders or it's tight, you could come down a little bit so there's a little bit less of it. I want you to try to lift your chest, squeeze your wing bones, engage, lift your thighs, use your thighs and your buttocks more than you're using your upper shoulders or your wrists or your arms. And then we're going to try, if you can, right foot up over that reverse tabletop and then drop your bottom for a moment okay come down onto your forearms squeeze this thread the needle leg towards your nose and then extend it out do it again bend same leg squeeze towards your nose and then out long thighs squeeze in engage those thighs low boat legs Bring the feet down, hug your knees, lengthen spine, chin to sternum. Now head, eyes look up, ear to left shoulder, ear to right shoulder, circle a half circle, bring it back up, bring your hands back again, spread your fingers wide, displace that weight a little bit. So you have a lot of like disbursements there. Press through all four corners of your feet. Tuck your belly. Think about your bottom and your thighs being a crane to lift you up. Lengthen, 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 lengthen. Now, if this is okay, you're going to bring your foot over the top. Good. And maybe holding this for just a little bit more. And you can do a series of these. These are very strengthening for your triceps and your core. Okay, bring your bottom down. 
Bring your forearms down. Okay, for all of you with the wrist thing, bring your nose to your shin. And then exhale, legs out. Bring your nose to your shin. Exhale, legs out. Nose to the shin. Exhale, legs out. Arms out. Tuck your belly. Keep breathing. Release arms overhead. Long, deep breaths. Long, deep breaths. All right, inhale. Hands come up. Exhale, plant, plug them into your joint. Inhale again. Shoulders curl up. Belly is strong. Maybe a little farther, a little farther, a little farther, a little farther, all the way up. So using that core, exhale the step. Bring your feet wide apart, as wide as that is for you. And it's gonna be different for everybody. Some people are almost into Eastern splits, completely to the side. Some people will be even narrow in this. I have a very narrow V Konasana sit, but this is my Konasana sit in safety for my hip joint, my tightness of the ball and joint. Now, inhale up, exhale, bring your fingers in front and walk it out. Lengthen here. Now, for many of you, especially if you're tight in the hips or the low back or maybe in the hamstrings and groin, this is going to be a tight and difficult pose. So what I want you to think about doing is going only to your edge of wherever that is for you that you feel like, whew, I feel this is a difficult stretch, but I can maintain this for a bit and breathe several breaths through it, maybe five breaths through it, and holding that position. And if you need to and you cramp up or it's too much, back off or shake it out and come back into it. Release back and come back up. And let's twist over your left and come down and lengthen. So here we're not, I just want you to keep your cupcake fingers and work on lengthening your spine as if you're gonna take your sternum and put it on your ankle. Your sternum to ankle, not your head down on your shin not collapsing, not your hands wrapped around your foot. I want you to stay as long as you can right here. And if that length may, if that allows you to bring your whole chest along your leg, keep your head and neck in alignment and long here. Walk it back, inhale up. And let's twist over to that right side and go down the leg and work on lengthening your body. So whatever we did asymmetrically on one side, we come to the other side. I want you to see if you can take your spine, make it longer, pull your chest down toward the leg, walk your fingertips more out, and keep your shoulders, you know, the humerus bone in a joint. So work on when you practice anything that way, whether you're doing weights, whether you're doing some other kind of cardio work, when you're constantly pulling on the bones apart and the joints, and especially if it's in a quicker mode or you're forcing something, that is just destabilizing your joint. You want them to work. You want them to feel the action. Roll it back. Inhale up. But you don't want to stress them to the point where they're fraying or they're straining or you get a tear. All right, now let's bring the feet together. Inhale up. Exhale, forward fold, Paschimottanasana. Now, a lot of people are going to go, oh, the be all and end all is this, is coming into your stretch. And but really, it's about lengthening your hamstrings and your spine equally and hinging at your hip hinge so that your low back gets stronger. So if you go at your hip hinge and you draw your navel in and you lengthen across that whole lumbar area, and then that psoas that wraps around. You think about using that as your girdle to hold on to the muscles and to hold on that psoas muscle, to hold on to that bony structure of your hips and the hip girdle. Inhale up. Exhale, hands to your side. Spin back around onto a tabletop. So coming back into a tabletop. And round into cat. Reverse. Cow. Come to your neutral. Tuck your toes under. Push back into your downward facing dog. Tread it out. Rolling 
breaths. Lift your left leg to the sky and bring your left leg between your hands and come to your pyramid stance here. That's that balance beam where if you had a line painted down your mat and you're lengthening, looking forward, you know, all four corners of your feet need to be even, so some of you may need to bump your foot up or back until you get your settled area and lengthen your spine. Look forward. You could, if this is super tight in your hammies, you absolutely could take one or two blocks. So a lot of people like take two blocks, one in each hand, so that your cupcake fingers or your hands can lengthen equally so that you're not kicked over from one side to the other. All right, now as we do this, hold, breathe. If you want, you can take your block and put it in front of your foot or more challenge to the pinky toe side. And I want you to bring that bottom hand down and we're going to lift up into a revolved triangle. Now this is a big pose, but we've done a lot of stretches to get you ready for this particular pose. Um, but if this is too much, the standing twist, you can take your block, let me show you, in front of your foot. I want you to resist the temptation to bring your block or your hand inside your foot because it's just going to cave in your upper back. So if you can take it on the outside or in front of that foot and find your, find your balance. I had to draw into my groin and my outer thighs are firming in. Exhale, hands down. Step your feet together. Come to a little tiptoe. Can you make a little egg? Kind of round your back and bring your nose to your knees and kind of squeeze into to a little egg position. Now if you can, and for some of you this is going to be really difficult, see if you can get your heels down in your egg. For me, I haven't done this in a while. Sometimes I'll hold on to the edge of my mat to get as deep down into my egg as I can. And then come up into your forward fold. So you're trying to get all four corners of your feet down in that, in that deep squat. So that's really difficult. And if you have knee problems, that may not be doable. You might have your heels up. You might not go down as deep into the squat. All right, now let's come down into tiptoe squat again so the heels are up. Prapadasana, not egg. Prapadasana, hold. Deep breath, lift up. Arms to sky. Working on knee stability. Working on quad strength. Now I want you to draw up, we're gonna stand up. So as you put your heels down, I want you to bring your arms in front, I'm gonna do it slow motion. I want your hips to come back and work for you and come up into your standing bird bahastasana, hands above head. Exhale, hands down, inhale, sky, breathe up. Exhale, forward fold. All right, now let's take our left foot back, right foot's in front into our pyramid stance. And as you do this, Again, adjust. So you may, you may need to uh, bump up or back with your feet and kind of imagine that stripe on your mat and you're lengthening, cup your fingers, eyes look forward. Long, deep breaths. Long, deep breaths. So you're working on that. If it's cramping up, if it's, you know, bend your knees a little bit, you can always bend, but the goal is to get them straighter. Okay, bringing that hand in front and block in front. So you could be doing this with fingers down, like such, with your right arm up. You could be in that revolved triangle. Or you could be blocked by your foot, which is a lot gentler, but still a great, this is a very advanced, this is an advanced pose. I would call this a two, three pose. Or on the edge of your pinky toe, working on that one, or if some of you have that hamstring and twisting ability, you're gonna bring your hand on the outside, but you're really working to firm in and your inner thighs are circling to each other. Zip, you're zipping up there. Long, deep breaths, never forcing anything, especially not the top arm, shoulder joint. You could put your arm behind your back or on your hip if, you're, if you have any kind of instability there. Exhale, hands come back down. Long breaths comes down, eyes look forward, step in, separate your feet hip distance, grab your elbows, give it a little wagging side to side, and curl on up, lift to sky,
come to Namaste. Bring your feet together. Big breath up. Again, Namaste. Come to face me, step out, Prasarita. Arms open. Inhale to sky. Reach up. Peace fingers down. Find your big toes. And let's squeeze in to Prasarita D. So you want to find big toes. Thumb locks over your two fingers. Knees softening. Head draws down. Spine lengthens across both of your wing bones. Opening up. Maybe looking at mat. Keep lengthening here. Maybe looking a little bit forward. Deep breaths. Keep lengthening. So you want to keep engaging and then inhaling and exhaling as you go deeper. Maybe staying right where you are. Maybe that's your tipping point where you go, okay, that's where I know I'm safe and I'm working in the pose. Don't ever force it. You're not going to get anywhere by forcing any of the poses. Okay, let's take the fingers in front. Inhale, eyes look. Press through all four corners of your feet. And let's look up. Lift up to sky. Reversing spine dive. And namaste hands. Big breaths here. Turning again with, let's take your left foot to the front to a lunge. So Anjani. And back leg and a lunge. Good. And then we're going to try to come down from here. So coming down to the mat with that back knee and toe down. So you want an L shape with your front, your knee over your ankle. Back leg is adjusted slightly back. Now some of you have enough uh, flexibility in your hip flexor to bring it back as I just did a little bit farther back if you'd like. Okay, now we're going to take namaste hands and do a noose pose to your left side over that left leg looking toward the elbow. Breathing. Keep breathing. As you breathe you inhale and then you exhale and you squeeze just a little bit farther coming in. Come back to center. Inhale up. Exhale. Let's kick back into a half split. Arda. So you're in the half version of it. Lengthen spine. And then come forward into your lizard. You're going to bring both arms down. Now I'm going to bring my block on the inside. Bring my forearms on my block. My groin is tight. And I'm not going to force it, but I want to stay even in my shoulder blades, lengthen my spine, keep my knee over my ankle. And I'm still working, really working in this pose. Deepen the breath. Try not to kick to one side or the other side. Stay even here. Try to keep that back leg going straight back there with the toe flat. Okay, coming back up from lizard. Tuck your back toe. Bump up, come back into your pyramid stance for just a moment, and then let's step backwards this time into a down dog, treading it out, shaking your hips. Mm -hmm. Let's take both of your toes, face them staggered toward the left, and you're on your right arm and you're lifting up your left. So a staggered side plank, just for a moment, a little core work. You can always do this with that bottom knee like this, bent. Come back to center, stagger the other way, lift up. You're trying to lift and firm from those hips, those inner thighs, lifting and really squeeze your inner thighs. Mm -hmm. Exhale, come in, down dog tread, nice. Lift right foot to sky, step it forward and come to your high lunge here. Lift up on this side into your Anjani, so now you're up with your right foot in front, engaging. Okay, so wiggle that back foot back a little bit more because we're going to try to go to the floor again. So if this is too much for you to go from the floor here, you absolutely can bring your hands to the floor and gently press yourself down. So you're going to lower, but you could have your hands on the floor for extra help. And then foot flat. Now look at your front knee over your ankle and bring your hands down on the inside. Now you could bring that leg back a little bit farther. You could bring it back a little bit farther. So as you're in this position, you want to look at your back leg and make sure it's at that diagonal. So it's not like this, up and down. It's back. 
Come to your noose on the outside of that leg. And looking up past your top elbow. Breathe. Lengthen. Create space. Breathe. And then come back to center, bring your hands down, kick back to a half split for just a moment. And when you do half split, you're thinking of taking a line from your heel all the way past your sitting bone and lengthening all the muscles in this zone. However, not locking the knee and straining the ligaments and tendons. So we're at really trying to, we're stacking our bones without sagging into our bones. Sometimes when people take a pose, if they're naturally flexible, and I can do this, but it's not a good thing. It took me a long time, I think several years, to actually get out of the habit. But if you're really lax in your ligaments, you could just sink into it. But I'm not working my muscles at all now. I'm not really working to engage and make my muscles stronger. So you have to start working the muscle area and not just sinking or sagging or plopping or hanging in the bone knee structure, the joint structure. Okay, come back to your knees. We're going to go lizard. Come back to your foot flat, knee bent position. And then you can come down to your block or to the floor. For me, I'm really tight groin, but I love this pose as long as I can modify it up to where I'm really feeling my inner groin. And some people tell me, oh, all I feel is the back hip flexor or oh, all I feel is my outer thigh. So it's, it's a big pose. It reaches a lot of areas. Deepen your breath even more. Deepen your breath, lengthen. Lizard, Uttam Pristhasana. Uttam Pristhasana, very intense stretch. And then coming back up. And again, we are going to tuck your back toe. Come up into your pyramid for just a moment. Lengthen, 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 lengthen. And again, we're going to step back into your down dog and tread it out. And I want to do just a little bit more core. So we're going to walk our hands back a little bit and bring your knees down so that you're in a floating tabletop. And then come up and back. Come into a floating tabletop. So you want your wrists under your shoulders and then come back into your down dog. Come into a floating tabletop. And let's see if we can just do this. Bring your feet to that staggered position here. And then bring your feet to the opposite staggered position, wherever you, whichever side you're on. Okay, switch sides again. Keep bent, use your thighs, use your core, and go the other way. And then come up and back into down dog, hold. And then bend your knees and go to a child's pose. Turn your palms under, especially if you have any wrist thing, turn your palms up, wiggle through your thumb and around. Move your hands and wrists, wiggle through your fingers, give yourself that reprieve. Maybe lacing, maybe twiddling a little bit if it's a thumb thing. And then coming back up. All right, this time I want you to, we're gonna go into Wheel of Life. So I want you to walk your knees to your right side of your mat and squeeze them together and your heels together. Then you're going to take your left hip down. So now, if I look at the parallel end of my mat long and you're long here and your legs are stacked, take your hand on your top leg and pull your top leg back to where you have, you can look down and you have an L and an L shape on your legs. All right, raise up. And that, this would be my right arm because my bottom leg is my left leg. So if your bottom leg is left, your top arm is your right or opposite if you're on the other side. And a wheel of life gets confusing. You're going to reach your arms out. And so here comes the big twist. When this arm, when this right arm is trying to stretch out and chest come down, it's a big twist. So you don't want to undo what the legs are doing. This part has lots of variations. Some people are super tight there and they maybe want their head on their hands. You could here use your block for a little pillow rest. Feels wonderful. You could, there's lots of variations here. You could have one hand under one arm out, really trying to get that nice stretch down the side. 
you could take your opposite arm. This is the most difficult. You have that right arm out. You're looking down your left, and it's like a T, and working on that. That's the biggest part of the stretch, and you have to turn your whole head to look toward that thumb on your left hand. But all the arm variations are acceptable. Wheel of Life, Ayur Shakrasana, bringing the hands back. Ayur Shakrasana, bringing the legs back. Coming back up into tabletop. Let's rock it. Okay, and then let's do it on the other side. So bring your knees all the way over to the left side of your mat. Bring your hips to the right. Look at the parallel, parallel. Take your top leg, make it in an L. 290 degrees, lift up. Now I'm gonna lift up my left arm because my right leg's on the bottom. So if you just think about it like that, asymmetrical twi reverse twist. So it makes it a little more complicated. Go as long as you can from your waist, not your shoulder socket, your waist. And then reach out. Now, see if you're different on this side because your hips are in a twist right now and your thighs are making them be in that fixed twist there. Now your, your, your swivel part comes from your core and your torso. So let's say, you say, oh, I'm just gonna put a block here. Never force your shoulder down. That's not the point of this. The point of this is the rotation and the twist, stretching. So maybe you have both arms down like this. Maybe your hands are under your head. Maybe you're doing that L or you're looking towards your thumb and turning your head. Maybe you're doing this and you can do this, but you can't turn your head so you're on your chin. Or you can do this. This is a really nice one. Forehead. Maybe you're that one. So whatever it is, whatever position that you are taking, do not force a joint into that. So you just the upper body stretch is just slowly working toward. This is the, the most or the the finish of the pose, I should say. A lot of people um, do not like the cueing when you say, oh, this is the fullest expression of the pose. Well, there's always some full expression coming back. But it doesn't mean that that's better for you or your body. Bring the knees stacked, but that's just where you work to go in a pose. And coming back up, I always think it's good to give people um, a chance to make that effort in their body if they can go there. And for many poses, people can go there right away. For many others, maybe their whole life of their practice, they won't be there. Round your back into cat, and there's nothing wrong with either one. We're all so different, and that's what makes it interesting. And then come forward into cow. And then round into your cat. Come forward into your cow. Round into your cat. Come forward into your cow. And then neutral. Bring your knees to the side, walk your feet out. We're gonna go into our Shavasana. So if you need any tools for that, something for under your knees. If you are pregnant, you will want to be on your side, maybe with a bolster between, you'll wanna be in a sideline position there or elevated with a bolster underneath you. So we always, we don't want to compress the vena cava. So we want you to be elevated if you're pregnant. Uh, if you have low back, you might want a block under or a pillow under your legs. We're going to curl back into our release Shavasana position. And it can be various positions. You have your feet wider apart feels better for you. Your feet maybe turned out. Maybe your feet are closer together. Maybe you're in a cobbler foot. Uh, you could be in um, hands on your belly, hands at your side, hands out like a T, hands overhead. Or, Ever you feel the most comfortable and that is the secret to get into your Shavasana and feel the most comfortable with this pose so that we start to breathe and we forget about the day what happened in the day what happened maybe a few minutes before we started to practice or even in our practice where we forgive ourselves for our faults and we say it's okay and we breathe and we try our hardest to release the monkey mind. So as you close your eyes and you release your monkey mind, I want you to think about how 
this whole experience that many of us have had uh, with this pandemic. What I want you to just for a moment think one thought, one thought about something that's changed. Um, and then I want you to let that thought become positive. So if it's something that you didn't like or something that you, um, that was bothering you, I want you to see it as a stepping stone, as a process, as something that you can work through, as something that you can overcome, maybe something that you can learn from, something that you can use as a tool, uh, something, maybe it's something really positive, something that you can hold on to, that you've learned, that you had the time to see a development. Um, so whatever right now is your COVID experience, I want you just to quiet your mind and think positive. Think samtosha. Think rest. Think contentment. As you release the Shavasana time, relax the back of your head and your neck and your facial expression. Relax your shoulders and your spine and your hips. Relax your glutes, your buttocks. Relax down your legs. Relax down your calves and into your feet. Relax the edges of your shoulders. Let them release down into the mat. Release your arms and your hands. Take deep, long breaths through the nostrils and filling your rib cage. And like billows, you feel your rib cage expand. And with each breath in your Shavasana, allow yourself to see yourself as a positive energy strong, flowing, positive energy. And as you see that positive energy within, breathe deep. Go into that place. See that place. See it as a place that you can instantly, no matter what's happening in your day or your week, that you can go to that place and you can recharge and find that energy. It's your personal place, your personal battery storage of positivity. We all can do that. It's free, it's a gift to all of us. So as you find this place of positivity, release, love and compassion, a place of calm, a place of understanding, breathe deep. Keep finding yourself walking deeper into that place. You can see your energy stores rising. You can see yourself overcoming. You can feel yourself feeling the possibilities that whatever is happening in this world, there is a reason. And if your reason on this earth is to bring positivity, joy, community, unity, answers, maybe it's your position to be a listening ear. Maybe you're here to be supportive, to be open. Maybe you're here just to be and for others to feel calm around you. So whatever your resources that you can tap into, all the positives. Now as we get ready to close our Shavasana, Let's take three deep breaths together. Ready? Breath one, inhale. And exhale through the mouth. Second breath, inhale. Exhale through the mouth. Third breath, inhale. Exhale long and slow. And then wiggle your toes and fingers. Turn your wrists around. Prepare yourself to roll to your side. Gently, slowly, slow motion roll to your side. This isn't about getting up quick. This is about keeping your spine and all those neurons, nerve endings from your brain all the way down the edges of your spine 
as calm and in Shavasana power mode as you can. It is a power mode. Roll yourself up slowly, not straining your spine. And come around on your sitting bone, Sukhasana. If you'd rather, you could have your legs out, stretch out in front or bolster hands to heart center. Thank you for sharing this class of some of my favorite poses. And thank you for being a positive energy in this world, working toward listening to others and finding unity and answers rather than shrill, angry voices. Thank you for being that real yoga, calm spirit. And so as we close, we say together, Namaste. And up to the sky. And exhale out. Thank you.